Did you know? Pokemon Diamond and Pearl were planned to be the ultimate Pokemon games. To unite Game Freak behind this concept, director Junichi Masuda made a summary outlining the philosophy and attitude he wanted for the new games. In an excerpt published on his blog, Masuda describes the game's world as the world of tomorrow, the world of the distant future, an ideal world, also an ultimate world. Masuda summarized his hopes for the game with two symbols, a diamond as a symbol of love and a pearl as a symbol of happiness. Masuda wanted people from all over the world to come together, and made this a reality with the Global Trade Station. For the first time in the series' history, players were able to trade Pokémon online. Pokémon Diamond and Pearl had many firsts for the series, such as 3D technology. Deciding how to implement 3D visuals took Game Freak a long time, as they wanted to ensure this new approach worked with Pokémon's art style. While the team tried to create the best-looking visuals they could using the hardware, they were also concerned about accessibility. They wanted players to understand the game easily. Like in previous Pokémon games, the overworld was based on tiles so that players can easily navigate the world. Diamond and Pearl were also the first games in the main Pokémon series to use touchscreen inputs. The lower screen's interface was carefully considered and designed to be used without a stylus. The first time Masuda saw Shigeru Miyamoto using a stylus on a prototype DS, he was struck by how unnecessary it seemed. He reasoned that people should only need a stylus in two scenarios, when the screen is too small or when the user needs to manipulate small objects. He felt that touching the screen directly was a lot more intuitive and that it didn't make sense to call it a touch screen otherwise. When he suggested the game be played using the player's finger, Masuda was met with resistance. Game Freak staff feared the screen would become smudged and dirty. Masuda argued that children were unlikely to care how dirty their console was and that the obsession with cleanliness was a Japanese mindset. He even took pictures of people playing the DS using their fingers. Little by little, Game Freak came around to his way of thinking. Graphically, Takao Uno was unsure about using his thumb to touch the DS's screen at first, but over time, changes to the UI reduced those fears. The options on the lower screen were all color-coded and made extremely large so the player could make selections without taking their eyes off the top screen. The big bold buttons also made it easier for young children to play the games, as they may not have learned to read yet. The fight command was made especially large, with the Pokémon's four moves hidden behind it. The commands were laid out this way so that players would need to move their finger as little as possible when choosing their attack. Another priority for designers was to help attract new people to Pokémon. Nintendo's strategy with the DS was to broaden the console's appeal to include casual gamers. President and CEO of the Pokémon Company, Sunakazu Ishihara, welcomed the approach. He felt that it was a perfect fit for Pokémon, a series designed with younger children in mind. The UI on the lower screen was designed to draw attention and pique the curiosity of people nearby. Masuda imagined the ease of use could draw people closer together. A grandfather may lean over his grandchild's shoulder to touch the screen, and while the child may be annoyed at first, it may create conversation between the two. The Sinnoh region where Diamond and Pearl takes place is based on Hokkaido, the northernmost island of Japan. Snowy areas were added to make the setting feel more northern than previous generations. The day and night cycle returned from Pokémon Gold, Silver, and Crystal to take advantage of hardware improvements on the DS. The DS has an internal clock and was able to display hundreds of times more colors than the Game Boy Advance, making a night and day cycle a natural fit. One mechanic which Game Freak reconsidered was the physical and special stat split. In the first three generations of Pokémon, all attacks of a certain type were either physical or special. For example, all Fighting-type moves were physical, while all Water-type moves were special. This meant that Pokémon like Gyarados, a Water-type with a high physical attack, was unable to reach its full potential. Diamond and Pearl instead split moves into physical or special categories based on their context. Game Freak's efforts paid off, as the release of Diamond and Pearl saw a surge in popularity of competitive Pokémon. In 2009, the Pokémon company even began hosting the Video Game Championships, a competition that saw champions from a number of local regional events come together to battle. While the games were announced for a 2005 release, Diamond and Pearl were pushed back to a December 2006 launch in Japan. Despite this, the games shipped with a number of bugs, most notably a glitch where the player could surf on certain tiles and clip through the wall and out of bounds. Crafty players discovered that by moving a certain number of steps while out of bounds and then saving and reloading the game, they could spawn on the overworld in places they weren't supposed to. 
This allowed them to catch certain mythical Pokémon like Darkrai and Shaman, who were supposed to be locked behind a special Nintendo event. These bugs were removed in the international versions of the games. While all of these areas would be made accessible through Nintendo events, the Hall of Origin, where the player could catch Arceus, was not. The Azure Flute, which was needed to access the area, was never distributed. In an interview with Nintendo World Report, Masuda revealed that after the game was complete, he decided the Azure Flute was too confusing for people and kind of hard to understand, and so he chose not to distribute it. Whether he was referring to the flute's mechanics or its in-game context is unclear. Pokémon Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum also received some censorship across the world. The Game Corner was made inaccessible in European and Korean versions of Pokémon Platinum to comply with the new PEGI regulations regarding gambling. And one story in the game titled Sinnoh Folk Story 3 was altered in all regions in English. The book, found in Canalave Library, alludes to the idea that people used to marry Pokémon because the two were so similar. In the Western version, this was altered slightly. Instead of marrying, people and Pokémon were instead very close, and ate together at the same table. Pokémon Diamond and Pearl's localization also contained scattered references toward internet humor and leet-speak, with many characters using words like owned and noob. Translator No Bogusawara was a member of the Something Awful forums and referenced online culture in the games. One of Nob's inclusions can be seen with a painter on Route 208, who names their painting My Pokémon is Fight. This is a reference to My Tank is Fight, a humorous book on Second World War inventions written by Something Awful user Zach Parsons. Diamond and Pearl were already designed to be the ultimate Pokémon games, but Game Freak knew that Platinum had to be stronger. It was decided that Giratina should embody antimatter, as it was a counterpart to the time and space embodied by Dialga and Palkia. Masuda explained to game designer Takeshi Kawachimaru that there was an antimatter world, a paradox of time and space that exists in relation to Dialga and Palkia. He tried to convey his idea by explaining complicated physics concepts and using the image of an upside-down Mount Fuji reflected off a lake surface. While Kawachimaru didn't understand the concept at first, he felt that he was eventually able to capture the idea's essence in the distortion world. Sinnoh's new Pokémon were designed to surprise players. Art director Ken Sugimori was conscious that not every new Pokémon idea was necessarily good. He wanted players to believe that all new creatures were different to the older ones, but that they were all still Pokémon. They were designed to look a little awkward to players at first. Uno drew from his personal experiences, using his everyday life as inspiration. He started his design process by looking at the Sinnoh region and deciding what kind of Pokémon would live there. The strongest Pokémon were designed first, and many Pokémon ideas were suggested by the team to create and maintain a strategic balance. Evolutions were given to Pokémon that looked like they ought to evolve, and also to Pokémon that would make the game more fun if they evolved. For example, Honchkrow is an extension of Murkrow. Honchkrow's broom-like tail and beard-like feathers also invokes witch and wizard imagery as well as crows and ravens. However, some of its appearance and name is reminiscent of a crime boss. In particular, Honchkrow's English name uses the word honcho, which is derived from the Japanese term for squad leader, or boss. In Japan, this reference is flipped, with the Pokémon's name being Don Karasu. This is a combination of Don, the leader of a mafia syndicate, and Karasu, the Japanese word for crow. Completely new Pokémon, such as Luxray, may take inspiration from the tiger, as well as the lynx or lion. It may even be based on the constellations of Lynx or Leo, due to Shinx and Luxio having star shapes on their tails. Luxray could draw more inspiration from the lynx, however. In some European folklore, the lynx could allegedly see through opaque objects. Luxray also has this ability, which can be compared to X-ray vision, linking in with Luxray's etymology. Luxray's Japanese name, Rentorar, is likely a combination of Rontogen, a unit of exposure to ionizing radiation named after its discoverer, as well as Tora, the Japanese word for tiger, as well as a roar sound. Burmy, Wormadam, and Mothim are all based on the bagworm family of moths. Burmy is based on the moth's earlier pupa stage of development, whereas Wormadam and Mothim are based on developed female and male bagworms respectively. Their unique setup of males and females evolving into different Pokémon was based on the fact that only male bagworms fully mature. The female bagworms are often underdeveloped in their final stages, which often have vestigial wings, legs, and mouths.
If you'd like to learn more about fascinating real-life creatures, you should check out the documentary streaming service CuriosityStream. The service was started by the man behind the Discovery Channel and features some of our favorite documentaries ever, such as Walking with Dinosaurs and Leaps in Evolution. These documentaries and over 2,500 others about nature, history, science, and tech are available for streaming right now on CuriosityStream. The service is available worldwide and on many devices. The subscription is $2.99 a month, but if you sign up using the link in the description of this video, you can get 30 days of CuriosityStream for free. So, if you want unlimited access to the world's top documentaries for free and support Digino Gaming, go to curiositystream.com slash DYKG and enter the promo code DYKG while signing up. Again, that's curiositystream.com slash DYKG. If you want more facts, you can check out the Did you know Gaming video on Mistakes in Pokemon Games. And you can also take a gander at Pokemon Goes Wrong by the prolific Walter M.B.